This lesson is focused on reading and writing CSV files into the complex data structures that we learned about in the last lesson. My name is Steve Baskoff. I'm with the Digital Scholarship and Communications Office of the Jean and Alexander Hurd Libraries of Vanderbilt University. If you have reached this lesson through some means other than our lesson pages, you may be interested to know that we have a series of lessons called CodeGraph. You can find out more about them by going to Vanderbilt dot lt slash code graph. CSV is one of the most common and simple ways to represent tabular data in a file. A lot of people like CSVs because of the simplicity that makes it good for long-term archiving of data because you don't have to worry about whether some application is going to figure out how to read it in the future. It's also very easy to compress and to transfer from one place to another. Often it's preferred over a file format such as Excel. If you're going to use Excel, it has to be read by a more sophisticated application like Microsoft Excel um, that knows how to open the very specialized file structure. Before we start working with CSV files, let's take a moment to talk about what they're like in terms of their format. CSV stands for comma separated values. And there's a reason for that. In each line of a CSV file, the, the values that are in that line are separated by commas. So here we have four values given name, family name, username, and student ID. Those are separated by columns, and then they are separated from the next line of data by a new line character. So this is similar to what we saw before when we had lists of items that we could read in through iteration. Each of the lines ends with a new line character so we can iterate through the CSV one line at a time. Many times the CSV file will have a header row as the first row in the file, but that's not universal. Some data do not have header rows. And so that is one of the um, problems with the CSV file is that by itself, it's not possible to know what the file structure is. Things such as whether uh, the first row represents column headers or not. If there is a row of column headers, then the remaining rows in the file represent the data itself. So if you take a CSV file and you open it in a regular text editor, this is what you're going to see. But we typically don't open CSV files with a text editor. Rather, we use some kind of a spreadsheet program that knows what CSV means and is able to display it for us in tabular form. So when you open a CSV file in a spreadsheet program, each of the items that are separated by commas show up in different columns. And then each of the lines in the file that are separated by new lines show up as a separate row in the table. There are a few things that we need to think about before we start working with CSV files. One of the critical things is the delimiter and the character encoding. In most cases in Python, the character encoding that we want is UTF-8, but programs that make CSV files do not necessarily automatically save the data in UTF-8 encoding. So the first time we save a file, we really want to make sure that the character encoding is set to UTF-8. We also need to know whether the separators between the items in the lines are commas or not. Although comma separated values is very common, sometimes tabs are used. Those are called TSV for tab separated values. But you also see cases where things like vertical lines or pipes are used as the separators. So again, this is a kind of thing that you can't tell um, from the file itself, you have to have additional information to know what the separators are. One important thing to note is that the CSV file storage scheme has some special tricks for handling strings that contain either the field delimiter, that is a comma, or the text delimiter, which is a double quotes. 
So when they invented this ESV structure, they sort of dug themselves into a, a hole by the fact that the items are separated by commas, because what if you want to have a comma in one of the fields of your data? Well, then the rule is you put that field in quotation marks. Well, then you have the trouble of what if you want to um, have a quotation mark? So then they have all kinds of tricky things like using double quotation marks and so on. So it's really not a good idea to try to parse um, or to write CSVs yourself. It's actually better either to create them using a spreadsheet editing program or to load and save them using Python library functions because those functions know what all the rules are and are careful to follow them. It also is not advisable in the long run to use Excel for reading CSV files because of the fact that the CSV files does not uh, contain information about the nature of the fields. Excel will make guesses about what the fields are and then read them in accordingly. So for example, if you have a column that has a code number of 1-26, it will automatically assume that it's a date and turn it into January 26. This is extremely annoying and has caused some really serious problems for people. So I don't advise you to use Excel with CSV files in the long run. There are a couple other options that are free. OpenOffice and LibreOffice are both pretty good options because you can turn off the feature of, of things like automatic date conversion. I actually prefer LibreOffice because of the way it handles files that are open. If you're writing a script in OpenOffice and you forget to close the CSV file in the spreadsheet program, then Python will throw an error because there is a lock on the file, whereas LibreOffice will go ahead and let you run the code without crashing. And then the LibreOffice editor will warn you that the file has been changed and ask you whether you want to save it or not. So I think this is actually probably the best way to work with CSV files when you're doing Python.